Good evening. I want to invite you to stand and join us in singing our processional hymn. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 3. are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. this night to shine with the brightness of the true light grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven where with you and the holy spirit he lives and reigns one god in glory everlasting amen please be seated for our readings and as you do i know we've got a few folks looking for chairs we've got about five chairs up here at the very front um, so if you need to rearrange them and move them we can Thank you. First lesson is a reading from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. 
You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 96, responsibly by whole verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord a new name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but it is the Lord who made the heavens. O oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence, O oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. And then shall all the trees of the blue shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. The second lesson is from the book of Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is he who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks to God. according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that 
all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. When they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord our strength. Please be seated. Hearing this Christmas story again from Luke as we do every year, I wonder what images stood out to you this year. For me, outside under this big Texas sky, I heard the way that the angels filled the heavens to declare Jesus' birth. But I also heard the way that the story arrived quietly under the radar of just about everyone. that Jesus' birth comes in a huge way in the heavenly realm, that God is doing a new thing, that never before has God taken on flesh and blood, never before has God hungered for a mother's milk or dirtied a diaper or cried real tears or laughed real belly laughs. This is a new thing, and the heavenly hosts really get it. Yet Earthside, on the radar, under the radar, the immense humility of God comes really, really quietly. In a nondescript manger in a tired backwater like Bethlehem to the travel-weary and utterly exhausted Mary and Joseph. And for a few hours, they get the luxury of it just being the three of them, the holy family, united in this intimate moment. We hear this story so much that I think the familiarity can make us lose sight of the power of the details. Because first century Palestine feels like a really long time ago to me. Like this is some fairy tale, maybe, of God's love. So I want to retell it a little bit tonight, and maybe tell it in a way that I hadn't heard before and you hadn't heard before, here in 21st century Central Texas. So settle in, we're going to listen to a story. Once upon a time, Mary and Joseph had just gotten off their shifts at HEB. When they load into their ancient Honda Civic, you know, the dependable donkey of the vehicle world, 
and drive to Joseph's hometown. And it's a long drive to Lano, y'all. And Mary is already starting to feel contractions coming really close. And the Honda sighs and sputters as Joseph presses on the gas and the contractions keep coming closer. But suddenly Joseph remembers there is no hospital in Lano. There's no hospital in Lano. And it turns out there's not a single room at any of the motels. So they pull over into the brightest spot that they can find, a barbecue joint, and Joseph prepares to deliver this baby. Meanwhile, along the highway, the truckers are making their way through the West Texas darkness, hauling their loads. And like high beams on the highway, a terrifying angel appears and they have to pull over in their fear. But fear not, the striking vision proclaims. For I bring you good news. Unto you is born the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in his parents' jackets in a Honda Civic in the city of Lano. And suddenly with that angel, the heavens opened wide and filled with angels singing the glory of God. And when darkness descended again, the stunned truckers got on their CB radios. Could it be, they said to each other, let's get on to Lano and see this thing that the Lord has made known to us. And pulling into Cooper's, they see it just as the angels proclaimed y'all, a poor couple and their newborn taking shelter in their car with the entire universe swinging around the miracle of God with us, Emmanuel. In scene. Now while the central Nexus nativity for me is far from our first century story, it helps me to hear again a few important truths about Christmas that I need reminding of again and again. And for me, the first truth is that heaven and earth are joined together in unlikely places, in obscure places, out of the way places. God comes to us in the places that are far from beautiful or shiny or valued in our world, but they are the places God desires to be. God comes to us among the poor. God comes to us among the suffering in the wilderness. And for God, that is good enough. Maybe the truth for you tonight is that you don't have to clean things up for God to arrive for you. Your own messy life is just exactly where God wants to be, where God wants to birth something new into the world. It's not only good enough for God, it is exactly where he wants to be. The next truth that this story helps me hear about God is that God shows up quietly in the dead of night, and his arrival lights up our world. Only a privilege for you get to be present in that moment, Mary, Joseph, maybe, maybe not a midwife, maybe, maybe not the animals, which, oh, by the way, I'm so missing the animals tonight. But by coming among us in this particular way, God's arrival has universal implications for joy and love in our world. From the particular circumstances of Jesus' arrival, flows infinite mercy, infinite love, infinite renewal. God moves in the particular to reveal the universal. Next, God's messengers announce this new thing that God is doing to the humble. The message is given out to the shepherds in the field at night, not to the priests in the temple in Jerusalem, not to Herod in his palace, not to the judges sleeping comfortably in their beds, not to the scribes poring over their books, this message of radical love and inclusion is brought to the people closest to God's heart. The truckers and blue collar workers of our world, those with hearts humble enough to hear God speaking to them, those who live close to the land, close to the poverty line, those who will hear this message of joy and take what they have found out into the world. Good news comes to those with hearts humble enough to hear God speaking life to them. And finally, the good news I most need to hear this Christmas, and maybe it's good news you need to hear too, is that God's arrival among us is a loving response to the sin and violence of our world. God sees our rebellion, our violence, our grief, and God responds with his loving presence not with wrath 
we're doubling down on commandments and duty, but God chooses to show up as a baby. Why a baby? It's really puzzling if you think about it. The creator of the universe and of all majesty chooses to reach us by coming as an infant. It's puzzling, but so, so brilliant. Because God comes to us as a child so that we can take him into our arms and into our hearts to love him. Love is the reason. Love is the way. Love is what is always, always about. Coming as a baby, we can finally put ourselves out there in this moment of new life to cradle God in our arms and say yes to the vulnerable, transformative power of love. And as in a mystery, by being loved, we learn to love as God loves. Whatever you hear in this story tonight, however you need to hear it, I hope that you'll have the courage to let your guard down and let God into your heart. I hope that you'll have the courage to pick up the Christ child, look into his eyes, and give thanks that God comes among us as the all-powerful, all-vulnerable, all-transformative force of love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand as we pray our prayers of the people. and drew those from afar to Bethlehem to greet the Christ child. Draw us to you that we may be the church you call us to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. As you bestowed on Mary your Holy Spirit and filled her with your grace, fill us with your spirit and renew our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. As Gentiles stream to Christ's light, to the brightness of his rising. Draw the people of this land and of all the nations to the knowledge and love of you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As angels sang hymns, sang hymns to your glory, proclaiming peace on earth and goodwill to all people, show forth your reconciling love to our world and end its terror and strife. Lord, in your mercy, as shepherds were drawn from their flocks by night to kneel before the gift of love, draw those who do not yet know you to the knowledge and love of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus was born in a stable because there was no room for them to find rest, be present with those who have no place to lay their heads and with those who suffer from hunger and cold from sickness and oppression, and from the desperation of loneliness. Lord, in your mercy. As the Holy Family travels to Bethlehem and to far off lands, bless all families, especially those who find themselves on the road, without a home, and surround them with your loving care. Lord, in your mercy. As your Son came to proclaim forgiveness of sins and abundance of life, give to the departed eternal rest and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, hear the prayers of your people and shine into our hearts your holy light that we may know the joy of your presence and the comfort of your promise to be with us always, even unto the end of the ages. All this we ask in the name of him who is born among us and lives within us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace be with you. I encourage you to share a sign of peace with one another. Can I go? Can you all may be seated. It is 
such a joy to see you here tonight and to celebrate Christmas with you on this beautiful evening. We got really lucky with the weather. And again, we are sad we didn't get our camels this year. The co they had a COVID exposure, the animal handlers, and weren't able to come after all. Um, but we have you, and that is more important because you are the body of Christ with us. So we're about to take communion. And if you haven't taken communion with us before, um, everyone's invited to participate in the service of the table. And you can just put your hands forward to receive the wafer, and we have gluten-free wafers available. And to receive the wine, we'll have a chalice bearer on either side. Into the chalice, and just try not to get your fingers in there. But it's also uh, appropriate to only take the bread. That's what makes you most comfortable. The full grace of the sacrament is present in each element. And if you'd like to participate but don't want to partake of communion, you can cross your arms and I will give you a blessing. I want to invite you to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice unto God.
You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and we glorify your name as we sing.
preserve it in peace. And that we might find our inheritance with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to commune our musicians and altar party, and the ushers will release you forward for communion.
bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
prepare for our post-communion hymn. I, I want to see if you've got your candles. Let's try and get them lit. The wind seems to have died down, so try and light them on their way back. Y'all just pass the flame on back if you can. You might need to shield up. not be meant to be.
May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.